Welcome back to Caffeine Confessionals. We are here to talk about the challenge All Stars 4 cast. We thought we'd be talking about this 14 months ago, but <laughs> finally it's here. My name is Ellen Aguirre. I'm joined by my Southern co host, Luke Muncy. What's up, guys? Our Vermontian co host, Zoe Trimboli. Hi, everyone. All Stars 4, it's finally here. It's finally here. They departed J- January, December of 2022 2023 and we're finally in the season debuting april 10th we've known the cast for a long time but here it is finally we're going to go through each cast number one by one and just talk about our thoughts on each person who we're excited to see who we think are threats to win we're gonna have a fun time here Woo-hoo. Woo. i have not been this hyped for a season in so long the trailer looked so good and just the names that, like, I, I we're going to get to see together, it's just so, so, so good. I just, it's going to be great. There's a lot of creativity put into this cast where I think, I think, I think most people agree. This is probably one of the best women's cast the show has ever had in terms of just having really strong competitors, a bunch of iconic names, people who bring drama, and also just some, like, random picks from the clouds. Men's cast, eh. Not the greatest competitively, but it's a it's a it's an interesting group. It's a group that I have no idea what to expect from. Um, the ladies are going to take the showcase here. That's what we're going to talk about first in this podcast. But it's an interesting cast. The men, uh, who cares? <laughs> I only care to see the women when they're announced, and then after that, it's just like there. We all know how I feel about this. The women carry this fran- franchise in my eyes, so with a few notable exceptions, but I'm hyped to talk about these women. If you don't know who, who's on this cast, I'm just going to rattle off a bunch of names right now, and then we're going to go through each person one by one. Cam Williams, Janelle Casanave, Jasmine Rainwald, Ayanna Mackins, Flora Alexune, Avery Tressler, Tina Barta, Veronica Portillo, Rachel Robinson, Nicole Zenyatta, Laurel Stuckey, Carmaria Cervello, Adam Larson, Kefla Hare, Steve Mankey, Brandon Nelson, Derek Chavez, Ace Amerson, Ryan Kehoe, Jay Mitchell, Tyree Ballard, Brad Fiorenza, Tony Raines, and Leroy Garrett. So for those of you who just wanted to know who the cast is, there it is right there. Boom. Well, we're going to jump straight into the cast, and I think we're going to talk about probably the biggest name. Oh, <clears throat> might be contentious. I, to me, the biggest name on this cast, Carmaria Cervello. Uh, everyone was so excited to see her come back on uh, this most recent season. We just had uh, Battle for a New Champion as a mercenary, but she technically filmed this season first. Kara was her first time back as a real full-time cast member since War of the Worlds 2. And when the news dropped of her being on this cast 16 months ago, it broke the internet. Yeah, I like that you contextualize that, that it might not seem like her return, but this really was her return. And it almost seemed like the cast, whenever it was spoiled a year and however long ago, that it was finished. And her and another name, that a couple names we're going to talk about later were announced. It was like, wait, what? This is going to be the best season of All-Stars for ever, or All-Stars in general. I'm excited to see her back because I think time doesn't always heal all wounds, but can help you forget about them. She was pretty insufferable on War of the Worlds 2. I'm hoping she comes back with a different kind of mindset, different mantras running through her head. So, <laughs> we know that I have some strong feelings about Cara Maria, and, but I'm just going to say this. I was excited watching her in the trailer. Um, I am really interested to see her dynamic with Laurel and Nicole and just how she's going to come into this challenge as an all-star, as one of the best women to ever compete on this show. I did watch her homecoming, Luke, um, because you were harassing me to watch those. And I developed, I feel like, a a little bit more respect for her. And I I gained some compassion for her as a person watching that. Um, So if you haven't watched her homecoming, go do that because it was it was good. Um, And I don't know if it's because I'm just like a Gemini and I'm super fickle, but I love the opportunity to have my mind changed. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have an open mind when it comes to Cara Maria this season. I think I I like the vibes I'm getting from her in the trailer. 
And I want to see her come in trying to snag that goat status. Like she said, I, if she walks in and is the same person from day one to day 873, depending on how long they want to air the season for, um, then she could make a believer out of me. Yeah. And I mean, if you're a fan of a, of a read, Alan put out recently his article of breaking down the entire trailer. It is so car heavy. Like it really feels like this is a season. She's like, you know what? I'm doing the damn thing. So I'm hopeful. We talked about it when she came back uh, as a mercenary. Kara had this big WWE personality where she was like telling people off and brought a lot of bravado. And that's not the Kara we watched for like 12 years, even when she was one of the biggest faces. She wasn't good at talking. She wasn't good at confrontation. The Kara in this trailer looks like a shit starter. And I kind of love it. Like there's a scene in the trailer, like not to spoil things where she's getting into, like, Nicole's face, and, like, Nicole's pissed off, and you just see a grin on Kara's face. Like, I think she has a different mindset on the show that's honestly more positive, where she's embracing the chaos and the negativity, and it's just like, yeah, I'm one of the best. Don't fuck with me. Even on the most recent episode of Ride or Dies, the first episode of the reunion, like, she's shading Anissa. She goes tit for tat with Tori which years ago would have like taken her out. She would have just like crumbled in that bunk bed in Thailand. But now she's just like, I don't care. And if she keeps that, I'm going to, I'm going to ride with her. I think. I like that she's handling stuff on her own and I think she had to, but I like that she can stand up for herself. And I, yeah, I'm here for the main character energy she's giving. She's earned it. How does she, how do you, I mean, how do you think she contends though on this cast? I, would you say she's, would you say she's the female favorite, or would you say maybe someone else is? I think Laurel's the female favorite. Um, I've just I've always thought Laurel's a little bit better than her, but we all know how this game can go. I don't think that they're that different in terms of um, like I don't think that one is head and shoulders better than the other. So depending on how things are structured. Carmaria is a strong contender to win. Yeah, and I even thought we'll talk later, but you asked the question, so I'm going to answer. Rachel Robinson, she definitely like scares me in terms of how good she's going to be because she's always on Instagram Live just working out. So I don't know, but I think I read a stat recently that she's never actually been into like a traditional elimination in one. Maybe you yeah, put she, that out there, Alan. She's never been in a one on one female elimination. She did those eliminations with Anissa. Um, where like that wasn't fair for her to compete in so right. like we've never like it it's kind of just the era she played in and I know so that she like you know back then on this team season why would you throw Rachel in she's an asset to your team um, and she had a great social political game with Veronica and stuff but yeah um, I will say Cara does have the edge in that she's been in the Rivals 1 final she's been in the War of the Worlds 1 final she's been in probably the two hardest finals in challenge history Laurel hasn't seen a final in 10 years. Rachel hasn't seen a final in 15 or 16 years. However old Anissa is plus 20. Um, um, so, yeah. Kara has that edge in terms of experience over them. Uh, but let's, you know what? When you talk about Laurel, though, I mean, Kara, Laurel is the name that comes up because, I mean, probably the most thickly layered rivalry in challenge history. Um <laughs> Well, and one that's a genuine rivalry, because I think yes. people might argue like Bananas and Wes, that's not real at this point. But yeah, Laurel, she does have this rivalry with Kara, which is so interesting to watch. The trailer revealed just like so little, but so much. And I just want to know all of it. Well, and if you watched the reunion, the last reunion episode from Battle for a New Champion, Laurel alludes to this rival like friendships rivalry friendships and how these relationships have ways of mending and like if you hate someone there's still love there and i mean if anyone thought she was talking about anyone but cara maria then we're not watching the same show the same show because like that that was a really that was one of the most intriguing parts of that entire reunion to me frankly because i was like oh is this thought to be like a laurel carl love seg love segment like there's a lot there. Yeah. I mean, th that just feels like such a tease of like what we're going to get to see. 
I'm excited. And she's also like beyond her relationship with Kara, she's just a badass. I was kind of harping on her a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about exes and just we were rambling. And I said, I feel like Laurel just needs to be by herself. From what it looks like in this trailer, it's a mixed match of like combination solo, whatever. This is where Laurel could really like, I'm going to say it again, do the damn thing. Like, I'm excited to see her work. Well, it's very reminiscent of free agents in that way, where if you want to get rid of her, you have to take a shot and you can't miss. And mm -hmm. Laurel is a really scary person to try and play that game with because of how successful she can be in daily challenges. She will get her power position back and she will take care of business. It's not like Ryder dies. You can throw her in with Jack and Jack is the weak link. Um, it's Laurel on, on her own. It is funny to think about with the Laurel and Kara is that like that Ryder dies season is the only season I think Laurel has ever done where Kara wasn't there. Um, and here they are back again. And it's just this everlasting dynamic where Laurel always beats Kara. She always beats Kara, but Kara has this much bigger image in the fandom, like where like Kara's the face, but Laurel just beats her repeatedly over and over again. And if well, Laurel had agreed, you're probably just going to say the same thing, so say it. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, Kara's did twice as many seasons as Laurel. Yeah. It, and so if you're a casual fan, she's not going to be as memorable to you. For, but to those of us who are diehards, like, Laurel is stamped firmly in my heart. It's so interesting because her return season was, what, World of the Worlds 2? Like, after so many years? Yeah. And to, and to me, it didn't feel like that long time, like, was rewatching at that point. But, like, she was gone for a good little bit. What a letdown that is, or was. And even Ride or Dies wasn't, like, my favorite thing I've seen of her. So, I don't know. Can she the way come... she went out in War of the Worlds, too, was so shameful. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's been a while since we've seen Superhuman Laurel, and I, I would really like to see that competitor again. But this is her opportunity, and if you're looking at Instagram, Laurel looks to be, like, in the best shape she's been in since her early days of the show. Like, Laurel's always said, like, when she won free agents, she didn't even train for the show back then. She's never trained for the show until recently. So an in-shape Laurel is a different creature in theory. Um, but if, if there is something that's going to hold her down, it's Nicole. And it's a constant cycle. And if you've been on social media, um, it seems that Laurel and Nicole got get back together this season, have broken up since then. And it's very messy. Like, I'm, look, I don't want to talk about stuff like that, but it's been all over our timeline for the last 15 months. So we can't avoid what's been put in front of our face, like completely blindly. Um, Laurel's a strong creature. She's a badass, but Nicole makes her crumble every fucking time. Luke, I feel like you could give the best recap of, like, a timeline of what we've seen from Laurel and Nicole since this cast departed. Oh, I was going to even jump a little bit further back, but I will, I will stick close to what we know here. They are so bad for one another. Well, I shouldn't say that. She is so bad for Laurel. Literally, the beginnings of the relationship was her being second pick because Kara didn't want her. Like, that's dehumanizing. I don't know if you all, I think we all watched X on the Peak. Just absolutely abhorrent, disgusting way to treat a person. I don't know how Laurel fell back into this guise that Nicole's a good person. No judgment. Love makes people do crazy things. But they literally finished this season, and it seemed like they were back in a relationship. And it, they were posting each other. It was vague. It was whatever. Something happened. Come to find out, Laurel took Nicole to Jack's sister's wedding and slept with Jack's sister's fiance that she's getting married to. Crumbled the family. Allegedly. I mean, Laurel posted on her story. But, like, crumbled the family. Laurel found out. Stole things from Laurel. Nicole said Laurel stole things from her. It's not even like funny haha -ha TV drama. It's just tumultuous, like, ooh, people are living. I want them to stop interacting, especially for Laurel's sake. Because I don't like Nicole, like not even as a TV character, as like a human. If anyone listening to this podcast ever thought I was a hater, 
they have seen nothing because there is not a cast member that has ever been on this show that I hate more than Nicole Zanata. I think she's a garbage human. I think she's annoying. I think she's gross. I like, I literally hate everything about her and I can't wait to see her break another ankle and lose. That's how I feel about Nicole. And her accent's fake. Her triplet sisters don't have that accent. Like, you're not raised in such a close proximity and your accent is that drastically different. That's, I know it's such a small thing, but it just is like, I cannot listen to it this season. I'm going to have to. And she also gets this, well, I'm just going to shut up. I don't like her. I'm not looking forward to her. She makes a lot of sense on this cast for what could unfold because her and Carr don't like each other. Um, I assume her and Laurel are not going to come into this liking each other, but we see in the preview that like there's going to be something going on there. So as much as I dislike her, she might be the catalyst for a lot of drama. Yeah, I mean, I get why production put her on the wall. Like, I totally get it. I do yeah. feel personally attacked by it, but I think it will make for some dynamic television. Yeah. yeah. Anyone who follows me on Twitter knows I do not like Nicole Zanata by any means um and it's actually really frustrating because i think objectively she checks a lot of boxes you want in like a reality tv cast member like messy hookups um just a strong competitor their social game is actually really good within the house even though they are an awful human somehow they always make friends and are and never get voted into elimination ever um but just the worst human ever just the worst human ever and I want to say this, I think Nicole, in terms of physical strength, athleticism, and like raw athleticism, and like fitness, is one of the best players the challenge has ever seen. I've seen her do some really impressive stuff on this show, but she's never going to win because she has no problem solving ability. She can't do math. She can't read. She can't, she can, she can barely spell her name. And she gives up too easily. Well, and I think while being fit, she also seems like feeble. Like she breaks literally, <clears throat> regularly. Yeah. Uh, so Nicole Zanata stinks. Uh, suffice worst. to say, um, but yeah, Cara, Laurel, Nicole. I will say, um, those are three names that I don't really think of when it comes to like all stars. Not even because like. They're not old to me, but they're not old to me because that means I'm old. But they are getting, they have been around for a while. Yeah, and I feel like this has been the issue with all these seasons. Like, what is the connotation of All-Star? Because it does not inherently mean OG. Like, of course, we got the We Want OGs like thing going on there for a little bit. The show wasn't called We Want OGs. It's called The Challenge All-Stars. You know, we're going to see somebody else announced later on this cast that's not old at all. North probably fits the criteria, but they're an all-star in all respects, I believe. So I don't know. I think a lot of people get hung up on that. Eh, I just realized Carl and Laura have been around for 15 years. Well, I was going to say, in terms of longevity of the show, they've been on it for a long time. <sighs> that, make, I think, that, makes, I, that makes me think, old, though. But I think part of it, too, is that they came from a fresh meat season. So it wasn't like you had this real world or road rules to tie them back to. But also just this speaks to how long the show's been on and they've been staples on it. So yeah, they're all stars. Yeah, for sure. No, for sure. Um, well, let's talk about some people who have been around the block a bit and <laughs> let's talk about some true OGs, probably like one of the biggest names, a name that people have been wanting on this show since this all stars idea came about. And that's Rachel Robinson. We, we talked about her earlier. Uh, Rachel is a two time champion. At one point was regarded as I think one of the goats, um, she is super fit, has been doing the challenge fitness show on YouTube for a couple of years now. But the last time we saw her truly compete was X's one back in 2011, 2012. Yet she looks better than ever today. Yeah, I never thought she would actually agree. I thought that her like exp her way to stay in the challenge realm was just to do those workout videos. But when she was announced, I was so excited because I, I really feel like she could do it. Like, I think also being away from the game for 12 years, I guess, when they filmed could be a detriment, but it could also be great. It's a whole different environment. She knows her worth. She knows how strong she is. She did back then, too. But like she knows she's stronger now than she was back then. I'm hopeful for Rachel. 
Rachel's like a really well-rounded player. I mean, you think about how far she got into that exes season with Anissa for a partner. They're the only female-female pair going against co-ed pairs, like already at a disadvantage. And Rachel has Anissa as a partner. Like that that's that is rough. And they made it a long ways. And that's all because of Rachel. Like it's because people like her. It's because she's good at things. Like they was that a season if you went in last, you came in last, you went right in? Yes. Yeah. Like it's actually crazy that they didn't leave earlier. Yeah. Rachel, even though she has not been on the show in 12 years, because of the exercise show where she's bringing people into exercise with them, she's training with them, she's staying involved in the community. She's also very outspoken on Twitter as well about the franchise. Like, not just like, she keeps up with the show as a fan, but she also takes dings at production. She takes dings at some of the male people like Johnny Bananas, which, great to see. Love, love that from Rachel. Uh, but she's still super involved, really friendly. And I think she's entering this game with a lot of friends and is just one of the big threats to win because. I don't see anyone tossing her in because they all like Rachel. That's like, she's so likable. And I, I was going to mention that too, Alan. I love that she's someone that's consistently willing to point out the double standards on this show. Um, on Twitter, I think a lot of people are afraid of doing things like that in fear of not getting casted. But Rachel's in the power position as far as that goes because they've been trying to get her back for years and she's like, nah, I'm good. Like, I don't need you. I'm fine on my own. So... I am really excited to see how she fits into this cast. Me too. And we're going to talk about more people that I think is are going to make her fit really well. Um, yeah. But I'm excited for her. Let's just jump into that right now because a big reason why Rachel's on this season is because she had two people nagging her every day in their little group chat uh, to be like, come do this season with us. Come do this season with us. We'll just talk about them as a pair together. We're going to talk about Veronica and Tina, the three OG Mean Girls from the Inferno 2, back to the, together for the first time in basically 20 years. Um, Rachel is the muscle of that group. Um, she's the one that makes them a really solid trio. Uh, without them, no offense, they're a little bit weak as a pair. Um, three Mean Girls back together, Veronica and Tina back for... Tina's like third All-Star season, Veronica's second... I will say Veronica did do well on that last All-Star season where if she didn't break her foot or whatever happened, she probably would have went to that final. And lost, but yes. <laughs> I mean, she she's being honest when she says she comes yeah. on these shows just for the check. Like, it's not like she's, you know, yeah. Uh, regardless of how they're going to perform athletically, I think it is so cool to have these three back on the screen together. Like, even if Veronica was unable to even, like, walk up one step and her foot was still messed up from the season previous, I would still want her on here just to see the dynamics of the three of them together. I think this is brilliant, smart casting. I'm low-key hoping that they do a, like, merch drop to in, oh. in an ode to their merch from a long time ago because i would buy it in a heartbeat um they're iconic this trio and so you can say what you want about two out of three's chances of winning which i think are very slim um they're going to make this show better and i think even just for like the reunion aspect of it like i think if they came on and were like sweet and boring and kind i think people would still be hyped because it's so cool to be able to see the three of them together again but that's not what we're going to get from them R veronica yeah. was very politically savvy on her last all-star season and i think we can expect that from her again and tina just can't keep it contained she just no. can't keep it in so i mean she quit her last season because she felt like she, she is getting to her but I feel like for her close friends there with her, she's not going to do that. She's going to be crazy and feel justified because these two people will back me up. Yeah. She quit two seasons ago, got hurt last season. Basically the same thing, though, in like a different way. Nah. Yeah. Um, I do agree with Zoe, though. Like, Veronica's political savvy is very crucial, not to her winning, but to Rachel's winning, which I think is like ultimately if one of the three of them wins, it's a win for all of them in a way. Um, that would probably be a win for Rachel mostly. It would be mostly a win for Rachel. Um, but yeah, having, like, for a Rachel who's just going to really cruise through this game, like, 
without getting her hands dirty, a Veronica is necessary for taking a shot at some of Rachel's bigger targets. Because I don't think Rachel is the type to be, not, not that she's unwilling to, but she's going to be a little bit more of a social like politician. I'm curious who Veronica will identify as public enemy number one. Because I do think that she's going to rally the troops pretty early on, and she's going to come in there with a plan. So I'm curious to see what that is. I, this is not like me even like inflecting on past spoilers because I've forgotten pretty much all of them. I actually could see her targeting Kara because I don't feel like they're tied at all. And like, if you want screen time and you know they're bringing her back for return, let's target Kara. Veronica does give a lot of props to Kara whenever she does interviews as like, who's like the Mount Rushmore of challenge female. She says Kara is like the strongest competitor. And that that's could, what, yeah. Could be why she targets her though. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I, I, that, that is realistic to me because I don't mean, has Veronica ever done a season with Laurel? I, don't I was just thinking the same thing. Ryder dies just last season. <laughs> Uh, I blacked out that Laurel was on that season with Jack because it just that to me was not a fair. Zoe, I blacked out that Veronica was on that season. Well, the only reason I didn't is because I just watched Darrell's home turf too. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at the very least, the just the image of them all together in that trailer was worth it because people have just been using that same grainy. Tw like uh, 120p photo of them for years. So now that they get to upgrade it, it's great. Um, a name who's, I you know, I didn't mean to like put this person down, but a name that's like nowhere near as iconic as these three, but a name that people have been clamoring for a long time back on this season though, and we've been clamoring for, Avery Tressler, uh, back on the show from the real world Portland, um, she came in, had that fight with Naya, had really weird show match with Johnny Riley, had a dog on her season, hooked up in a bathroom, uh, went on X's 2, won a couple eliminations, showed promise, and then MTV basically lost her number after Leroy was hurt as her partner on Rivals 3, got her sent home early, never bought her back again. Finally, back on the show. And we really did say, like, honestly, probably two years ago <laughs> that we want her back on our screen, so... I'm going to say the three of us manifested this. It's a no-brainer. She's a beautiful girl. I saw her just yesterday at Challenge Mania Charlotte. She looks young, for especially for her age. Great shape. Like, she had lots of catty moments. But, like, that's what we want sometimes on this show. So I'm, I'm curious if she's still going to have some of that or if age tones all these people down. This could be, like, a redemption season for her, though. Well, as... Some people may know I'm the ultimate Nani defender. And, but like, even though Avery and Nani had a very strange, unnecessary, uh, antagonistic relationship when they were on the same season together, I still have wanted Avery back on this show for years. And I'm usually like, a, hey, if you hate Nani, I hate you. And there's just something about Avery. I just couldn't do it. I think like, after what we saw from her on Nexus 2, the potential was so clearly there. And so for her to never come back after Leroy gets injured on Rivals 3, that was just a travesty to me. I, it was just such an overwhelmingly ridiculous casting mistake. I'm so excited to see her back. Luke, do you know about the last season that Avery was almost on? No. So Avery was supposed to be on Invasion of the Champions but got dropped two days before they left to film. They dropped Avery and added Jenna to the cast. And... Um, it kind of does make more sense, but... Hey, hey, look, I went through multiple simulations in my brain where, like, Avery comes in second place on that season behind Ashley. Um, I, I'm, like, I'm the biggest Avery fan in the world. That was probably a very crazy idea, but it is... Like I, Avery, Avery had all had had all the potentials, like just like the looks, the personality, the competitive ability. She checks all the boxes you want in a reality TV cast member, and then they just didn't put her on the show for ten years. I can think of somebody else she could have replaced on that season, and it's even people I don't want to say, but like she could have replaced a lot of people. Yeah, there's definitely other people she could replace. I think that the Jenna Kayla storyline was essential to yeah. uh, 
this franchise at one point. So I get why Jenna should have been there, but yeah, no, Avery belongs there over some others. Sylvia, maybe even. Sorry, Anne, if you ever listen to this, but because Sylvia was a rookie that season, no? Yeah. Okay. And I guess her with Nicole and Tony, I don't know, but that's a shame we never got her back. Until now, we have her back. So welcome back, Avery. Wasn't it, was it Annika that? Anika? Anika? Yeah. 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 I mean, even Marie, I'm sorry. Like, I like Marie, but like, she was first boot, hadn't been on in years. I don't know. Anyways. I just want to say as well, I'm really afraid though, because I've been so excited for an AV return for literally eight, nine years now. And now I'm like, what if she sucks? What if she just, what if, like, I've been so excited for this idea. Like, I got, I got so into the idea of Avery. And then I'm like, oh, she really only competed on one season nine years ago. Doesn't have much experience. Like, she's still very fit looking, but she's not anywhere near as experienced as these people. Maybe doesn't have the social connections. Might be a bit rough. It could be. I think she has a great opportunity to play a middle forgotten kind of floater game for a while and just if she can get along with people I think she'll be in good shape um and because I don't know what the dynamics of what they're planning for a final but a lot of the guys will want to keep her around because she can keep up um I think that there's a very clear top tier of female competitors I don't think she's in that top tier but there's also a very clear bottom tier and she's not in that either right. so <laughs> I think that she I'm, I'm just curious to see how she handles it I'm curious to see what her if she's going to come in and politic politic uh, that's but. actually the politic element of this where Avery comes on this cast she's so young still like Luke said she's the shiny toy she she kind of is like Jenna on X's 2 where she comes into a house and people are just like I want to hook up with her I want to date her and if we got to talk about, we, we mentioned it before, social media is around. Avery seems to be with Adam Larson, uh, who's also on this season. Um, I don't know if they got together on the season itself. But there's going to be a lot of eyes on her within the house, which could be crucial to how far she goes in the game. I'm excited. It's about damn time. All right, who do we have next to talk about? We have kind of a deep cut. Flora, who I actually, I'm not fully sure on her last name. Uh, when I wrote my preview blog about this show 15 months ago, um, <laughs> she, she replied six months later to me via Instagram. And she's like, hey, could you please correct my name on here? Uh, and the name I was using was the name that's been her name online for 20 years. So I'm not sure what her last name is, but Flora from the real world Miami. She appeared on, I think, what, one challenge season many, many years ago. Uh, in terms of OG, does not get more OG than this. Kind of a historically messy cast member. Uh, she, I think she tried to sue one of her fellow cast members on her original season. Got into a bunch of fights. She's Ukrainian. Um, I just add these are details I know. She was on an episode <laughs> of Botch a few years ago. Um, these are not like not all these are related. These are just things I know. These are just things I know about her. And I don't think she's gonna do that well competitively on this show because she has very little experience. But Flora's on the show. And there was that video of her years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, her and Beth in some random kitchen talking really negatively about uh what's her name? I forget. Three-time champ on the cast, Veronica. Yeah. Like, wasn't there a video of her talking, like, mad shit about her a couple years ago? You would her know and, I. I think there was. Her and Beth in a kitchen somewhere. Yeah. Well, I just know that Gamer was super hyped about her, which sometimes that is misleading because Gamer just like to stir the pot. Um, but uh, Gamer also loves mess. So... I'm curious to see. I also think it's hard to say, oh, this person was messy 25 years ago. So we can assume they're going to be exactly the same today. Like, we have no idea what we're getting from this person. 
full disclosure, yeah. I've never seen their real, uh, real world season before my time. And I haven't done that much research into her. Same. And I won't. I just have to laugh when people like post pictures of her and tag Michelle Fitzgerald because she does look like an older Michelle. So that's my only takeaway about this person. And I'm ready to move on. I Look, I'm just saying from her episode of Bosch from a few years ago and from the Instagram DM I received, I think she is the same messy person she probably was <laughs> 25 years ago. Just just the way she worded that text message, I was like, yeah, this does not, this seems like a person who's ready to argue with people. All right, let's see it. Someone who definitely argues with people. Um, let's talk about Jasmine. Uh, she looks to be in much better shape than she was on her last season. Uh, she's recently divorced from her really weird ex-husband. Um, if anyone's ever like dug into that. Um, I think she has half a Twitter blocked, but uh, Jasmine is always a firecracker of a character, a terrible competitor, just a really historically awful competitor. But she is loud on camera and she is sometimes entertaining to watch. There are some seasons I love Jasmine, some seasons where I'm just like, she's a little too much. I'm really, I'm really hot or cold to Jasmine. Here's what yeah. I'm sad. Go, go, go for ahead. It. I was just going to say, like, she does seem to have gotten to a lot better shape. She's free, single, whatever the case may be. If she would came on to All Stars 1 like this, it would have been a big deal. She is just so overshadowed by all these other women because she's done All Stars since. She doesn't have the John A. Best Friend element to throw in there. I, 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 I could see her being first boot, and I wouldn't be shocked. Her and Tyree together. Um, but mm. I... Yeah, I don't think her being in shape, honestly, is relevant. Because like you said, Alan, she's bad at everything. Bless her heart. I think John A brings out the best in her, and John A's not here. Um, Jasmine is a character. And I think in past seasons, her being on this cast would be a really big deal. But like you both said, like she's just so overshadowed. Um if she can hang around for a few weeks, good for her. She's not winning. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Jasmine is a great character on a weak cast when you need someone who could just fill up some screen time. On a big cast like this, she's just kind of a distraction uh, from the main game. Um, and, like, I don't mean this with, like, any, like, with any mal intent, but I've watched this show and Jasmine will tell us, oh, I'm afraid of heights. Oh, I... I don't do I don't do the whole swimming thing. Oh, I don't do puzzles. And when it comes to size, she's overmatched by almost everyone. So she doesn't really bring much to the table. And then she gets into fights and drama with people. So the social game really isn't there either. Um, it's actually a testament to how far she's gone in seasons and the fact she's a lasting character when she's just not good at this game at all. And then it's like, I don't I don't mean that in a bad way. I think it's um, a little bit, one, again, I'm going to give credit to John A for the season that they were on for a considerable amount of time together. But I also think, like, it's the layup factor. No one's in a hurry to get her out because she's not going to beat you in anything. I just don't care. I like her. She's cool. But, like, there's so many other cool people I'd rather see. On All Stars 2, uh, Jasmine did get into a beef with this person, and that is Ayana, who is also in... Okay, so this is going to be an interesting person to talk about. So let's just talk about 15 months ago. Ayana lost a lot of weight from All Stars 2 coming into the season, and on All Stars 2, Ayana won a couple eliminations where she looked really impressive whenever it wasn't anything that was heavy cardio. She's a former collegiate athlete. She worked as an educator. She's pretty good with puzzles. She's a pretty good natural athlete. So her being in shape, big threat coming into the season. Not as big of a threat, obviously, as Laurel and Cara, but if you put this version of Ayana on an All-Stars 2 or All-Stars 1, real threat to win. But here's where stuff comes up when just talking about her. Anyone who's been following on social media, uh, Ayana's currently battling cancer, and it's really sad because, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's heartbreaking to see someone having to battle and go through all this. So... 
I don't really know how, I, I really don't even know how to talk about Ayana right now. I just don't because yeah, it's a, it's an interesting situation. I think it's hard to talk about someone in like an objectively critical way when you don't want to say anything that could be misconstrued or add any sort of stress or negativity to their life when they need all the positive energy they can to fight a very real battle. Um, yeah. no, no matter like what we think of any of these people on television, like we're not wishing anyone to get cancer and we're not trying to make Ayana's life any worse by like, even just like harping on anything about her abilities. Um, so I think, I, I think that she is a formidable person, like you said, Alan, in a season that's not so quite so stacked, even just for size wise. I think she's one of the bigger women on the cast in terms of like height. And then if she's in shape, like that's, that's a force to be reckoned with. I'm not sure how she'll fit into this cast socially. And I'm curious to see um, if things do happen with her, how MTV will edit that considering what she has going on. I, if you want to look, you can look at what happened during filming. We're not going to talk about it ever. Um, Gamer tweeted, they're going to edit all the stuff out with Ayana. It makes sense. Like, and there are people that are complaining on Twitter about that. Like, that's not fair for us, the viewers. It doesn't matter. Like, there's no equity with that. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's best for us just to say we're excited to see her on. And there will be no critiques from us just because that seems so lowbrow. Yeah. There are some things bigger than the piss for. Um, Certainly. Right. Uh, moving on, uh, we got two more women on the cast. Someone who was also on All Stars 2 and was one of the finalists was Janelle. Uh, Janelle's a very good competitor. She won a she won Inferno 3. She did another season after that and then went to the final again with Darrell, where they beat Jody and Brad in that final elimination of the season. She had a bad back, still worked through the final. A little bit of controversy there in the final itself. Um, Janelle thinks they won and I'm actually shocked to see her back on the show again this season I'm excited I like Janelle like I like Janelle on her real world season it's one of the few that I've actually gone back and watched I like Tron All-Stars I really liked how real she was I like that her back was messed up and instead of quitting she's like well let's just do it I'm here I like that she thinks that they won because sometimes I think they might have won I would love to see her pull out a win I think that I love her confidence and I love her as a character. And I think she's like a sleeper on this cast, frankly, because I think, again, you have all these like huge names and you're not paying much attention to Janelle. But um, I think that she's someone that gets along with most people. And I think she's really smart and she's not going to put herself in the line of fire for anybody because she doesn't have that close of ties with anyone. So she's not going to stick her neck out for anybody else, but she gets along well enough. Um, it's really interesting because, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they won that season also, but I don't know that the storyline of John A and MJ winning is, like, production seems to love Jarrell, and I, I have a hard time believing that they would snub him, personally. Like, the only reason I could see it is because of John A coming on the first season, mom bought, as she said, like, this is not me critiquing her body, and then coming back more in shape, you know, being resilient, like maybe that's why. Um, when we could MTV also like break for their women, though. Well, <laughs> it could probably be broken down even further than just the base. But like, you're right. Like, what would be the reason to actually rig to that extent? I don't know. I love revisionist history, so that might be why I like to know. MTV loves Darrell. But they don't love him enough in that they constantly give him, like, the short end of the stick sometimes. Or, like, when they bring him in as a mercenary, they don't give Darrell, like, a pole wrestle or a game of win at. Like, they, they had Cor they had Darrell get embarrassed in that elimination against Corey a couple years ago. Um, there's just been some moments where it's like, you know what? You could have looked out for Darrell a little more if you wanted to, if you were production. Um, but Darrell's always going to come back because he'll always take the appearance check because he's, by guy's money motivated. Um well, and to be fair, Darrell didn't get his choice of elimination that we want to see him in, but neither did CT, Laurel, or Kara. So 
a Darrell hates heights. Like that was that's something he actively like. It's like he did, they didn't get it. I jumped off that thing onto the ground. I love Darrell, but Darrell, that's not heights. <laughs> <laughs> so Janelle, yeah, Janelle is really cool. We could see her winning in theory. Um, not a big threat, but definitely a sleeper, especially in a pairs game. Janelle is just, I think, ability to work with anyone. And her lack of weak, she doesn't have any weaknesses. That's the big takeaway with Janelle. She isn't going to overwhelm you with any strengths, but she's just solid across the board. Connie Gonzalez. Zoe, I love, I, look, I love Nani after that last final. I, I don't know. I don't know. Get into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's round off our cast, though, with I think the casting that's probably. I'm not going to say it's the one that's upset the people the most, but it's like really taking people back because this person is still only 29 years old. They weren't on Real World. They weren't on Road Rules. They weren't on Fresh Meat. They weren't on Room Raiders. They weren't on Next. It's Cam from Are You the One. Uh, probably I, who I would say is the greatest female competitor to never win a challenge championship. It's shocking to see her back on the show, uh, see her on the show because it, it is All Stars, but also. She was, what, six to nine months removed from having a baby when this filmed? Yeah. If not sooner. Maybe six to nine months. You're right. You're right. I guess I didn't anticipate this being a polarizing casting decision because if there's, I mean, if we're just saying the term all-star, you can't look me in the eye and tell me Cam Williams is not an all-star. You can't. You can't do it. I don't care how long she's been on the show, how few seasons she's been on. She is certainly an all-star. Um, and if we're taking in the recent all-star seasons, the, the history of those into account with all these returning parents, particularly returning moms after just having a kid, she fits that narrative perfectly. And if we all, all fans of Cam are desperate for a Cam win. So like, yeah, please bring her on an all-star season. Maybe not the one that Laurel, Cara, and Rachel are on because I would have liked her path to be a little bit easier, but I'm happy she's here. And again, like, I'm so curious to see socially how Cam fits into this group of women, particularly because she has her ride or die there with her. Um, right. But I'm so excited Cam's here. Me too. I think if I think if the criteria is real world, road rules, fresh meat, the one exception they can make is Cam. And I just think if she was going to say yes, how could you ever say, well, sorry, you don't fit the criteria. And I said with Cara, she was announced the same time as Cam. Twitter literally was not broken, but it was like, this can't be real. Like, we've not seen either of these people in such a long time. They're returning for this together on the show. Those two alone, I think, had me excited for this season. I just didn't expect to see Cam for a really long time after having a child. Like, I just I just didn't think it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the fans don't know how lucky they are. <laughs> and spoiler, she is pregnant right now, may have already had the baby. Like, we probably won't see her for a very long time again, if ever. So this is going to be a nice little treat. Seeing that she's pregnant now makes sense why she wanted to do this season because the window wasn't going to be like available for that much longer. Um, it will be fascinating to see who she aligns herself with because Cam has had her beast with Laurel um, and the, you know, on War of the Worlds too. She was basically working with Kara the last two seasons they did together. Um, the question is, will they be as close this time around or will she see Kara as too much of a threat to her winning the game and also like when they worked together Polly was kind of the intermediary where it was Paula Polly and Cam like working in lockstep politically um without Polly there I wonder if they're gonna have the same type of relationship I I don't know but you said Paula and I got thrown off so I'm sorry but probably not uh because Polly and Cam I think are actual friends I think they went to college at the same time at the same school so like know of each other they're both from Jersey, same place. Uh, I don't know. I always felt like the vibes were off with that friendship. I, I never thought Kara and Cam made sense as friends. I think there's 
a ton of res- mutual respect there in terms of like ability as competitors. But I know that they've both come out saying they're friends before, but it never made sense to me. It was just like one of those things where I'm like, it just doesn't compute. Cause Cam is just like so real and so chill. And I would not use either of those words to describe Car Maria. Sometimes <laughs> maybe contrived would be a good word for Car Maria. Whereas I don't think anything about Cam is contrived. Yeah, it's it's very, very different personalities. Both very strong personalities, but very different. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how how that goes without Polly being the peacemaker or the go-between or the glue. Because I, I, I don't know. There is an interesting factor, though, in that there are men involved in this game. And I think Cam... What? There, yeah, there are men on this show, too. So if men have control of some votes for the women, Cam has a really good relationship with, well, obviously, Leroy for being, being engaged. <laughs> uh, you know, that's pretty decent right there. But with Brad and Tony as well. And if you have those guys on your side, that's a lot of power for making moves if you want to. If you could manipulate those guys into playing your game, that's a lot of power for Cam. Uh, I do wonder where she's going, like what her relationship is going to be like with the Inferno girls, because I think that's going to be the breaking point where they might see Cam's political prowess as a threat to them. But I do think they should all be on the same side if they're going to ever beat Laurel and Car Maria. And how did Veronica react to being on seasons with Cam? Like, I want to say she thought the the like the mastermind plan was brilliant or she thought she was doing too much. I don't know. Because they've done seasons together. It seems weird to say, but I don't know. I I don't know if Cam necessarily wants to win people over. I think she just wants to be herself. So I can't see her. Yeah, I can't see her pandering, though, to, like, the mean girls. No, but I also think Cam has just a natural ability to get along with people. I I Mm -hmm. think that she, unless someone is, like, really egregiously awful towards her, I think she gets along with just about everyone. I think because everyone likes her and everyone wants to be friends with her. Yeah. She's not going to like, like tiptoe around things or tell you what you want to hear just to make you feel better, but she's not going to just go make enemies out of nowhere either. So I could see her, especially getting along with Rachel, I think. Especially because they both have kids. Yeah. And I could see, honestly, Tina would never admit it, but I could see her fangirling over Cam a little bit. Straight up, do you think Cam has a shot of winning? Yeah. I do too, yeah. I don't think, obviously, for good reason, she's in her best shape coming into this season, and that is, like, completely understandable. But I think she's still kill a Cam, and depending on the length of the final, whatever, if she gets there, she's always a threat because she's good in so many ways. When she's also, yeah, she's also not smart. Like Zoe said, understandably so. She's not in the best shape. She just had a baby. But like, she's smart. She could pit all these women that are really strong against each other and get to that final with Janelle and Nicole Z's bum ankle. And I like those odds. Throw in Flora too. I like those odds even more. Uh, Flora. Throw in Derek. (laughs) I like those odds even more. Ooh. So that caps off our female cast. Uh, we're going to move into the male side of this cast preview. Uh, because we were just talking about Cam, I think it's really easy to talk about her ride or die. Leroy. Uh, the last time we saw Leroy was on Double Agent. It was his big retirement season. <laughs> Came in third place, but it was also the best season of Leroy's challenge career. By far, he won more daily challenges on Double Agents than he did the rest of his challenge career combined. He destroyed Jay in that elimination he kills every single time, and he showed like a massive improvement when it came to swimming, showed a massive improvement when it came to puzzle ability, was confidently playing the game, and based on this trailer, we're seeing a more confident version of Leroy, which when Leroy plays an active game, I love this guy on the show. 
I don't know a person who casually watches this show that doesn't like Leroy just because he is so rootable, like rootable for, I don't know the terminology, but like if Leroy won the season, I'd be happy. Don't even know what it's going to entail, but like, he's just a good guy. It seems. Yeah, you can't not like Leroy. The only times I've had issues with Leroy in his challenge career is when he's a Johnny Bananas lapdog. Like, I just don't love that. But Johnny's not here. So, like, and I think that also is a thing of the past. I think that, like, Leroy just came in too chill when he started the show. So he was just like, yeah, that's my guy. And I'm going to ride with him because it's going to make my life a lot easier. But, like... I think Cam brings out the best in him. Um, so I'm really excited to see this power duo on the show together. I think that Leroy also has a way different motivation to win than he's ever had before. So I'm really curious to see what that brings out in him as a competitor. Zoe, back in the day when I was at my peak Johnny Bananas hate, Leroy was always the exception of like, oh, I hate Johnny Bananas. Oh, but Leroy's cool. You know, Leroy's cool, you know? Like, that's how, like, like, like Luke's right, too. He's so easy to root for because there's just, there's something likable about him. Like, I, the first real world, or the second real world I watched ever was, like, real world Las Vegas, and I loved him so much. The way he, like, stood firm and not letting Adam just get away with his BS. I, I love Leroy so much. He's, like, one of the coolest dudes. And coming onto this all-star cast, like, looking at his, like, fellow competitors, Leroy has experience over them. He's in incredible shape. And when he plays with Cam, he doesn't play a lax game. She she tells him to play the game for himself. And they were a dynamic duo the last two seasons they've ran together. I'm excited. Yeah. I yeah. feel like this is why people shouldn't say they're retiring, because... <laughs> Like, I hate to spoil, but, like, he's speculated to be on 40. Like, sorry, he is. It's like you you just needed a break, and that's okay. I think that people – he did a lot of seasons over, like, a short period of time. I think people get burnt out. And, like, I think some of these people think they, they're older than they are. Um, because even, like – I mean, how old is Leroy? I think he's, like, 37, 38. I mean – Darrell's what? 44, 45. Yeah, 44. I was going to go there. Like, you can still be in great shape at 38. And like we've seen with CT, really, all that experience is just makes you a better competitor in the long run. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let Leroy come back and as long as he will keep coming back. Like, yeah. He, he's just one of the few, like, good guys on this show too like truly good human beings i don't think there's a lot of them on this show he just had his best season he just had his best season ever in my opinion like in terms of being a competitor on this show um so age doesn't really matter in that way like sometimes it's like the like and like only when it comes to like a hall roll or a pole wrestle does being younger and having that explosivity like matter when it comes to, like, puzzles and swimming, the experience you get, as long as you can stay in decent shape, that that's that sometimes matters more. I think Wes, in the last few years, has been a better competitor than he was back when he was all gigantic. Like, I, the challenge is not just about, like, a pull-up competition, which I think Leroy would actually win, um, <laughs> just as, like, a side note. But, yeah, I will say if Leroy doesn't win this season, then... I'm not sure when it's happening because this is a golden opportunity looking at the people he's going against. We also want to note, don't know the format of how people win, lose, what that's going to look like. So it could be something really stupid. Who knows? We'll find out April 10th. Let's talk about the other big threats to win, though. So okay. we got Leroy here. Another big name who we have not seen since Final Reckoning. It's Tony time, baby. Tony, uh, last time we saw him was Final Reckoning. Before that, he won Champ versus Pros 3 uh, with CT. Had his big season on Vendettas, and then has just been off the show since. I'm excited. <laughs> Do I think he's an all-star? No. Like, I think he's less of an all-star than Cam is an all-star. 
because his entire trajectory on the show has just been a cheater that's a little bit insane, gets too drunk, and you won the charity season with CT as your partner. But I liked him. Like I that there are a few guys that I actually want to root for. Like Corey's one of them. Like I'll root for Tony on a season just because, like, why not? So I feel really differently. Uh, I'm pretty salty about Tony getting like for doing arguably like bad human shit on this show and facing no repercussions for that um, and just being celebrated for it really. And then like being laughed off when the women on this show, if they like misstep in any way, get put through the runner. And that's not Tony's fault per se, but I, I, dislike him for the same reasons that I would like wrinkle my nose at Leroy. The last time we saw him, he was a to- Johnny Bananas lapdog. And oh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't love that. I don't love, I don't think he's consistent. I don't always think he's authentic. I think he's pretty manipulative, but in a very like dopey way, uh, I don't think he's ever been held accountable for anything he's done. So I think it's I, an interesting casting decision. And I think that he's a good TV character. I personally am not rooting for Tony. I get it. I think his accountability came in the form of his significant other saying, no, you can't go back on the show up until this point. Now we could unpack that, but I get exactly what you're saying. Like, we are celebrating someone as an all-star for doing all-time bad things. And it, it's just, if, if the female cast members on the show just still weren't getting torn up in their Instagram comments about the exact same things or not even things that are as bad, I don't know if I would feel as strongly. But when I go, look at Tori Deal's Instagram comments or I look at Kayla's Instagram comments or, like, I look at... Nani's Instagram comments like just start like naming women who get really torn apart by this fan base and then everyone's like it's Tony time I'm like (laughs) yeah (laughs) you can be excited I get why people are excited he is an interesting casting decision he's a character he's gonna do stuff I'm not personally rooting for him there's when you have Leroy on a cast I'm not rooting for Tony fair Guys, this is where, like, nostalgia and time just, like, kind of glosses over things. Because there was a point in time where I just, I've been some of the most vicious and just, like, biggest takedowns of Tony, like, in my blogs ever. Like, especially in my early days, like, taking down Tony was, like, one of, like, the main parts of my, like, blogging life. Um, The first season I watched live was Dirty 30, so I hadn't seen the previous stuff. I'd still seen him cheat on his girlfriend on the bus with She Who Shall Not Be Named. I was rooting for him to win with Jenna or um, Kayla. Like, I was like, Tony's got to win the season. He's got to. So maybe my brain's just clouded. Hey, no, no, no. I'll say this. Like, Zoe's right because, like, Tony is a guy who plays the victim, like, all the time whenever anything goes against him, where the stuff that happened with Corey, like, that is one of the most, like, misconflated things ever because we're talking about a guy who Tony is – Six foot three, six foot four, two hundred thirty pounds, drunk, has gotten into fights on the show before, uh, literally got kicked off a show for crowding over she who would not be named on Rivals Three. Um, drunk, gets over Corey's body like this in the middle of the night when Corey's already angry. And so Corey, look, probably shouldn't have soup like suplex him into the concrete, but when you have a a drunk guy like that going into you who's that size at that time of night. I've always thought like the way Tony played the victim in that all was absolutely insane. He also did cheat on his girlfriend multiple times with multiple cast members that we saw on camera. Um, That's not even talking about what we haven't seen, but I'll say this in terms of messy and chaos, I like messy and chaotic cast members. I like people like Tony because he makes my job easier. And the last time we did see him compete on the show, he had gotten very good. He went from being one of the worst competitors the show has seen to a guy who was an absolute contender. And he looks to be in great shape. And against this cast, he might have a real shot at winning. Does he have any friends? Leroy? 
Besides Leroy, because I don't like again. I don't think Leroy's going to stick his neck out for Tony when he's got Cam there. You know. Um, I would argue Brad, and I would also say Nicole Zanata, and by proxy, whoever Nicole Zanata's with, which looks like there's going to be some people that Nicole has, which I hate. And I think Cam too. Um, so, yeah. And also, I think a lot of people rallied around Tony after the hurricane stuff as well within the community, where he has that angle where, um, I look, I did not expect the conversation about Tony to get this I, all over the place. I, it's I, fine. We can go to the next because I'm honestly not that excited now. I'm like just thinking about what this is going to be like. I'm sorry. I put such a damper on this. You guys can be excited about Tony. That is just me. And I haven't been able to let it go. I'm just, sitting here thinking of him working with Nicole now. And I'm like, no, this, 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 this is this is why the podcast is good, though, because we're, we're we just we're not a hive mind. We're all over the place. Uh, ooh, someone you, with a beehive of a beard, though. We got Brad back on the show. Uh, Brad was amazing on All Stars three. I mean, was the top physical competitor all season, and then came up short to West in the final. Uh, West, I think, beat the brakes off him pretty thoroughly, like throughout that entire final. I can remember us last season or of All Stars saying we want him and Kayla to win, and I really liked his story that season. For me, though, it's like, okay, we already saw it. What is this season going to entail that's any different? And has Brad continued to spiral more so than he has even just a year ago? I don't care to see Brad. I like him. If he won, I'd be like, okay, cool. But, like, I don't care. How far apart was his mercenary appearance and all Stars 4? Because I know that, like... Months. Six, seven months? Okay, so, I mean, a lot can change in six, seven months. I don't know where he was at before he went on to this season, but I'm, I mean, he, he was bionic Brad on all stars three. So if he comes in and like, is any sort of in any sort of similar physical shape, I think he's uh, guaranteed to do some damage. From the trailer, he looks smaller than he was in all stars three, but nowhere near as small as he was as a mercenary. Um, I agree with Luke, though, because, like, if Brad had won last season against that stacked male cast and come out on top, it would have really solidified his challenge legacy. Now this season, if Brad does anything but win, it's a failure going against this, like, no offense, this pity party of a male cast. So if Brad doesn't win this season, it's a failure. Uh, and Brad, as much as I love the guy, as much as he's a beast, he has a long history of losing on the challenge. I still think what the duel two he got screwed was it? I remember being outraged watching that as a child because I I played soccer growing up. I was a goalie, and I just remember that being the reason essentially that Brad lost. Oh, duel one, yeah, to West. Oh, duel one. Sorry, my bad. I misnamed it. But like him going up against West for like that advantage to start that final, I was livid as a child. Like. <laughs> That changed both their like their, that changed both their lives so much and the trajectory of their existences as humans. Like, imagine Wes without that challenge win so early in his career. Like, he would not be the same person he is now. I gave him a leg to stand on for all his yeah. weird behavior. Hey, Wes retired after that win, so <laughs> Wes literally retired and came back four years later. So, Leroy, you're in good company. Um, there's, there really is no storyline for Brad here other than win or don't win. Like, do it, or do not. And we like Brad. Like, it's not like that we don't like Brad. It's we've seen him on three straight All Star seasons, and you know, there just isn't a big storyline for him. It's not like he has a rival like MJ this time around. If he walked in with his beard shaved, that would be storyline enough, honestly. But, like, we're going to get the same old thing. I just don't care. We don't have an ex of his. We don't have a Brittany or a Tory Hall. Like, I mean, I guess on, some, on one hand, I, because this male cast is so lame, I'd rather see Brad be successful than some of these other bozos. Yeah. So, like, Brad has done enough on this show for me to root for his success because it would be shameful for some of these other people to do well. 
Well, let's talk about a historic competitor right now. Someone who's a close personal friend. Uh, Mr. Tyree Ballard, uh, back on the show again. Um, I believe he has a re- he might have the record for being eliminated first out of like the most of any player ever. Uh, he's been on like five seasons, never made it past, I believe, episode five or six. Uh, he just doesn't really have the skills for the challenge. The part of it is people view him as a weak competitor and then they throw him in, but he loses the eliminations. Um, if you don't know the backstory, at one point, Tyree, many years ago, got very mad that I called him one of the worst competitors in show history. And he tweeted that he was going to fly over to fight me or something like that. But look look at us now. I have a podcast, which is like the best anyone could be, ever be doing in life. And he's on the challenge, which is probably the second best anyone could be doing ever in life. So we're both doing well right now. Yeah, I hope he makes it far. So like episode six. Yes. That would look that would be actually huge for Tyree. And as much as like I clown on him, X is one, him and Jasmine are literally the only thing keeping that season entertaining the first three or four episodes, because that season kind of like is a snooze with all these DQs and stuff going on. They're back on this show. I think they're both single. That would just be a funny rekindling. That would just be, like, even if they don't rekindle, just to have them in the same room would be funny. Yeah, it was not on my 2024 bingo card, for sure. Um, can't say I'm rooting for him. I am. Uh, the, He's a close personal friend. He's a close... Yeah. You're just saying that so he doesn't fly out to where you are and beat you up. I mean, that um, would... That would be great content, I'm not going to lie. For the sake of content, it would be kind of fun. I think you could outrun a Malin. Um, yeah, I... Tyree is interesting. Like you said, he's just bad at everything. We've never seen him be good at anything. So, I mean, if he makes it past episode... Honestly, I think six was really generous. If he makes it past episode three, I'll be impressed. If he can because win an I also think I think he's really grating. So, like, he's not good, but I don't think a lot of people like him very much. Yeah. I don't know enough about him. The only thing I know about him is not related to him on an actual show. And it's just not worth sharing right now. So, yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Subscribe it's, to not, it's not bad on him, so just to yeah. clarify. But, yeah. Uh, all right. All right. So, moving on. We're talking about from a guy who's never won an elimination. Let's talk about a true challenge beast, someone who's made it to a challenge final before. <laughs> I hate this preamble so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Jay Mitchell, uh, last time on Battle of the X's 2, went to the final all the way as a rookie, won a daily challenge, never came in last place, played a masterful social game, hooked up with two-time challenge champion John A. Mannion, the fact that this gremlin has touched both Jenna and John A makes me sick to my stomach. Well, I don't disagree. I am actually going to step out on the ledge and cannot be changed. This is such a funny casting decision and a good casting decision. We literally got nothing from him, like nothing. So, like, the expectation is low. He can either just stay low or supersede that and do something really kind of cool. I think this is where the connotation of All-Star gets thrown under the bus, ran over, scooped into a pile, and then shoved off a cliff. But I think it could be really funny. I think I, – I firmly believe production did this just to watch Twitter and Instagram clown this man for months. Like, I don't think they care about him one bit. This man never took challenge out of his Twitter handle since – X is two when he was made the laughing stock of the franchise. And like, still, if people even remember him, which is a slim chance, the only reason he will be brought up is if Jenna's brought up. If people remember him for a second, it is just to talk massive amounts of shit about him. So I am, I just believe production. He's been begging, literally begging by not taking the challenge out of his handle for years. And they're like, yeah, this male cast sucks as it is. So why not throw Jay in there? He can't make it worse. It is quite literally so funny, though, that he did yeah. not take it out. And, like, he gets his redemption 
years and years later. Idris, take notes. They're going to call you one day, buddy. But I, I really am excited. He's not connected to anybody except for Nicole, which, wah. but like, I'm intrigued to see what he does and who chooses to use him as one of their pawns and how he reciprocates that use, that use. If he gets a second layup storyline, oof. I think this is a perfect casting. I, I'm so excited because it's so, it's like, it's low risk, high reward. Either we watch him just be the clown we thought he is for years, or he gets complete redemption out of nowhere. There's no, it, 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 only hilarity can ensue or surprise. And I got to say this, he's not a bad confessional. I watched his real world. I watched Exit 2. He's a, de- he's a decent talker. Um, watched him competitively. He's not amazing, but some of these people on the male cast specifically, they're awful. They're like like Tyreek, like can't do stuff. Jay's like decently in shape. He actually looks pretty, looks pretty in decent shape in this trailer too. I'm like, he's still still a tiny guy, but not in bad shape. Yeah. You know what I said? I'm open to having my mind changed. I'm not, not open time. to having my mind changed on Jay. So you guys, okay, well, bookmark you this. But I'm gonna be the negative Nancy about Jay all season long. Mark my words. I will not change my mind about this man. I'm praying you do. I recently, when I did that top 10 most undeserving finalist blog recently, I put him in the thumbnail and he wasn't even in the list because I just knew people would click on it. That's how, like, I, like that's where I felt like I'm, like, literally just using the image of his weakness for the for the thumbnail. Um, that's I'm excited, for, I'm excited for him on this show because, like, Years ago, no, I would not have been interested, but enough time has passed to where I'm just curious enough to see what happens. And yeah, next. Next, we have. Ooh, another bad competitor. Ryan Kehoe. Uh, we last saw him on All Stars 2 for a minute. I think he lost an elimination to Kahada. Um, Ryan. He, every people in the house like Ryan. He plays a good social game, but he's a terrible political player. Never makes any big moves. Doesn't win many challenges. Isn't good when it comes to mental stuff. Um, he's probably good to have a drink with, but other than that, like he's <laughs> he's not a threat. He was really nice to challenge Mania. Um, yeah, but you seemed to mingle mingle really well with all the other people. Uh, I don't even remember All Stars two him being on there, so. And in fact, I hate to say it, when I met him at Challenge Mania, I went home and realized that he was going to be an All-Stars 4. That's how like much it had slid my mind. I I had read this list before we started, and I forgot until you said it. Um, yeah, I think I, I'd be fine to get a beer with him, but I would never want him on my team for anything. Who was he along with that season? Melinda? And like Derek? Like in the very beginning? Okay. I don't remember. I would have more respect for Ryan if he actually like tried to make big moves and play the game, but he just never does. Um, I, I think he's one of the most frustrating players I've ever watched on this show because um, he just plays it safe when he's just he doesn't have the skills to beat anyone better than him. So you can't play it safe for too long, and then you're just going to get cut off. So, yeah, sorry. Wow, no one, no one has, no one's gonna stick up for Ryan. You're just gonna let me bury him like that. I just, I don't remember any of his past seasons, to be honest. Was he no, a fresh meter? I maybe someone will in the comments, but I completely agree. Yeah, he, I, he was partnered with what Ter- Teresa on Fresh Meat Two. No, no, no. He was, he was for, but that was he's from Fresh Meat One. Right. He was, was partners he? with Melinda from Fresh Meat One. Oh. Which is why I think they were tied on All Stars Two. Yeah. Did they go home early? Yeah, they they lost to Wes. Okay. They're one of the many teams to lose to Wes. Another historically terrible competitor, uh, a guy who's been eliminated first on or first or second on multiple seasons, uh, and on the first person eliminated in All Stars one, uh, Ace Amerson. I'm happy to see him back actually because that first elimination on All Stars one, he was literally like he was facing someone he could not beat. And looked like he was holding his own for a little bit. 
I think he could be a sleeper in this. And maybe I'm wrong, but like, I really do. I think if he's not thrown into elimination, like, even if he is, this male cast so far is pretty dreadful. So, like, Ace could hang for a while. Like, who's gonna who's gonna say he can't? Like, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I've watched this show and like this guy's he. It's not that he's bad at everything. It's that he also just never gives a hundred percent. He's a very like chillax guy, and he's like when the going gets tough. Ace has already called in sick. He called in sick five minutes before the going got tough. Like, he's just never going to be the guy who gives his all. Everyone in the house seems to like him, though. Like, he's always very funny. Like, people, whenever people talk about being in a challenge house, they always remark on him being one of the funniest cast members ever. Um, but he's just not a good player. Like, and I wish he was because people seem to like him. We'll yeah, see. he's... I was, he's just never made enough of an impression on me for me to have a strong opinion one way or the other. Which I think is a, not a compliment. Because <laughs> I think, honestly, in some ways, it's more of a compliment to Jay that I hate his guts. Because at least I remember him. Oh, yeah. I couldn't tell you any, like, flagship season that he's been on. Nor do I care. Like, you could tell me and it just would still not matter to me. I do think he has, uh, I think he has a relationship with Cara because he lived in Montana when they lived all of the Montana together. So they might have like a, a bond like that from hanging out like her and Kahada and, you know, the group of them. Kahada would have been good on this cast. He would have very much so. That would have been an improvement because again, likability matters. Mm -hmm. Another person who's been eliminated first on multiple seasons, which really rough to say like four times in a row, but uh, I actually do think this person is not a bad competitor. And that's uh, Derek Chavez. Yeah, I think there's also like the curse of the gay man on the challenge too, that they were for so many seasons, the gay guy on the challenge was targeted first and thrown into the first elimination against someone they couldn't beat. Um, so I think it's a little bit unfair to those people's records because yeah I, like i just think that's it's just not fair <laughs> it's like, yeah it is what it is yeah i'm gonna go off limb here i don't care i really feel like he's gonna do season 40 because he's such good friends with olivia from the past two seasons of the challenge and if he does i really could see olivia like buying him favor and could be really actually interesting now in terms of all stars four I don't see this trajectory being that great just because there's so many strong people there. And I don't know how he falls into this socially. Like he's got, um, I think he's another one people like though. Like he gets along with everyone. And Luke, actually I, I disagree. Like in terms of the men on this cast, I think Derek is better than a lot of these guys. Cause I've seen him, like I watched him compete on battle of the seasons with, with team Cancun and John a. And when he actually got the opportunity to compete, they did well. When he was competing with Rob on Rivals 2, they were doing well, and then they lost in the blind stick fighting competition. Um, yeah, I just mean the most recent All-Stars that I saw him on, he wasn't in good shape. Like, in 2012, yeah. sure. But I, I don't know. I've not looked at his cast picture. Perhaps he is in better shape. But I still fear that he might have connections and still get thrown in early because, as Zoe said, like, well, he won't care. Like, there's that, like, underlying assumption that because he's a gay man, like, he should be expected to go in first or, like, or Some people just view him as weak because of right, that. Right, I do right. think that there's been less of that on the All-Star seasons because a lot of these people are friends. I think that that was very, especially like these gay guys coming on as rookies in past seasons, I think it was easy to like, oh, like they're not going to be very good, which is ridiculous. But it is mm -hmm. what it is. Um, I think he's, I don't think he's going to be a first boot. I Like you said, Alan, I think he's better than a lot of these other guys. And I think he's more well-liked. I think he and Janelle are friends. Yeah. I and know. I forgot that Jasmine's there. I, I think even if he does go into the first elimination, I think he's beating Ace. I think he's beating Ryan. I think he's beating Jay. I think he's beating a lot of these guys because he I gives, agree. he gives 110%. And he was like a decent track and field athlete. Like he's a good, he actually moves well in these daily challenges if you watch him compete. Like, I always remember him, obviously Jasmine's small, but I remember him carrying Jasmine on his back as he, like, ran, sprinted up a mountain, the same challenge where Zach and Frank were pushing Sam around. 
um, like Derek, Derek has a lot of heart. And also like I interviewed him years ago and what I was amazed by was that he remembered every single detail of every daily challenge he's ever competed in, which is like a true passion for the show, which I just have to respect, which I don't think some other people on the show have because he fucking, he loves this shit. He wants to do well. And if there's ever going to be a season where he does it, it's this one right now. And if he does it, he's never doing well on the show. That's interesting you bring that up because I was just having a conversation with my dad about athletes the other day. And like we were talking about baseball and how certain players, what they can tell you about the exact moment they got this hit and the pitches they were getting and what the count was and what the situation was. And that's like a very, that's an athlete thing to do. So you saying that he remembers all the technical bits of the challenges he's been in adds a level of, um, it, it adds a level of competitor to him. Because that means he's paying attention and he's putting it, he's cataloging it somewhere to use in the future. So that I find super impressive, actually. He was dropping the corny names of the daily challenges, so just like casually. And I would just like, I don't, I don't pay attention to the daily challenge names ever. Like it's, that's such a nonsensical fact, like a, like a dumb name, but like he cares and I respect Derek for that. Um, I would like to see him do well compared to some of these other guys because some of these guys go far, then you're going to have a rough show. Uh, someone that some people have been clamoring for, I think he's been an alternate on a couple All-Star seasons, um, Brandon Nelson. Uh, he's most known for winning three eliminations on Cutthroat um, and then losing a lot of other eliminations on other seasons. But I, I don't know. How do you guys feel about Brandon? I like it. This was one that I was definitely like, you know what? This is a callback to who people used to root for, like. It's been several years since. Has likely wanted another chance back on the show. I really, I want him to do well. I don't know a thing about his physicality. I'm working solely off of just nostalgia here. But, like, it, it ticked the boxes for me. I think he was dealt such a rough hand on Cutthroat. And then in seasons afterwards, he just was never as socially connected. And I think he's a firmly average competitor, right? Like, I don't think he's going to beat the best of the best, but I think he's solid. And again, you're looking at this male cast. If he's able to sneak through, I think he's going to be a better than a lot of these other guys, potentially. I don't know what kind of shape he's in anymore because we haven't seen him in such a long time, but I think he, his challenge road was never easy. Um, he was never, and maybe that like, I'll say socially, politically, He's not great because he didn't find ways to like firmly plant himself in people's like top one, two or three in terms of people that could get protection. I think it's also really hard as a guy coming onto that show. If you're not winning dailies to be protected, um, people want to protect someone who they can call upon to return the favor. And Brandon was just never going to be better than those other guys. Um, but I like, again, I think he's a good dude. And I think All Stars is the perfect setting for him to make a return and to have a, a redemption arc or to see if he could have been on a different sort of cast dynamic, how far he could go and what he could do. So I'm excited to see him. Me too. Random. Was he on Battle of the Seasons? Yes, he yes. was. With that team. Yeah. Big Easy Car Camilla. Yeah. Big Easy. Yeah, Cara. him and Kara are very close, actually. They're super duper close. Like, back in the day, they would always post on Instagram with each other, like, working out and stuff like that. Um, they're actually mega close. It's a very underrated, like, friendship. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. And also, like, that's one reason, too. Like, I know he did seasons after that season. That was so bad for him. It was so bad for really all of them, except for Big Easy. But, um... <sighs> but... My thing with Brandon has always been he prides like his bread and butter is raw strength and athleticism when he's just not the most athletic guy on the cast. Um, so he's never going to win when you're just the fifth strongest guy physically. But on a cast like this where there aren't many hulking men, it's a big asset to be the athlete Brandon is. Uh, so, Yeah. He's not a great swimmer, not a type A person socially, but I just his baseline competency should get him decently far on the show. And I remember him being really likable and getting along with most people. So he's not going to get a target on his back. Hmm. 
Good for Brandon. I like him. I do uh, too. Yeah. What's his last season? Free agents. Yes. And yeah. he faced Zach in that hall brawl where he just got knocked into a wall. Like. Yeah. I think probably one of the biggest one of the bigger sleeper threats in this competition is uh, the hand model. He's back. Uh, Steve, and I would never say that on any other season but this one. Uh, but Steve was cool on his other season that he did. Yeah. Like he was someone who I did not know at all, but he was not afraid to go, like, rival Derek a little bit. Or not even rival him, but just, like, poke fun. And not that I think that Derek is unpokable, but, like, I think a lot of people have this under lying thought like well Derek's very involved in the challenge world like maybe I should try to suck up to him Steve just didn't care he's like this is my chance to come back and like talk about my hands and play this game and and didn't Steve all he do all he did was make a joke about Derek's shirt right Mm -hmm. like and Derek took it way too far (laughs) like it was it was totally harmless it was definitely like a moment of like my ego's being threatened and I have to like peacock here but I liked Steve too. He was someone I came into that season with absolutely no opinion of and came away from it being like, he can come back. I like yeah. him for the exact reasons you said, Luke. I like that he's not just going to like go along with whatever everyone else wants just because that's what everyone else wants. He has he has his own mind. He's going to make his own decisions. And I think that's cool. Yeah, and I think, again, like this is why people like him might not seem like they have the best chance to win per se. But they don't have all the baggage or history people. Like, I really feel like Rachel, Tina, and Veronica are going to get targeted just because they're known as a group. Whereas someone like him, Jay Gotti, can, like, weasel their way in with somebody and it not be so obvious, but, like, can be this massive numbers that can make it while these prominent known groups might get chunked off. Like, I, I fear for Leroy and Cam even because, yeah. like, yeah. They're, they're a power duo. Absolutely. Steve was a really fun confessional. And I was just very impressed with him in that he had – Really good problem solving skills in the daily challenges and the like the brief times we saw him. He seemed to be good with puzzles. So I just think that intelligence really just plays, gives him a massive edge over all these guys who stink and the guys who are good are kind of meatheads. So Steve just is not a complete layup and he has skills, which other people don't have. Um, I would like to see him go far because I think he has a charisma to him. Um, Steve's great to have on this cast. I would not think he would be a, like a threat to win in any other season, but he's a good casting and he's a potential outsider who could, you know, maybe do okay. Agreed on all fronts. All right. We got two more guys. We have your guys' favorite competitor. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. It's uh, Kefla Hare, um, who... who was on, I believe his last season was Real World versus Road Rules, season two of the show. Um, he's, I believe, almost 50 years old, or he might be 50 years old. Um, the guy has basically never competed on a modern, nowhere close to a modern challenge season. Uh, but if, if you look it up, I think he has like some pretty impressive degrees, works in fitness. Um, Dude, just he's the, got that old man strength. It looks like, like he's a mammoth of a dude, and he and he's got, if he's approaching fifty, he's got that like next level of old man strength potentially. I I think without knowing anything about him, I was like, this, this could be a sleeper. He he might do some damage here, because I think he's kind of intimidating. Like especially like physically, he's kind of imposing, but like I think going into the show where like no one knows you i don't think i look at this male cast you think any of these guys want to see him in a pole wrestle no no <laughs> and when we, when we talk about these all-star shows you had yes on the first season you had ayana on the second season and you had ronnie on the third season all make pretty decently far runs after not being on the show for a long time and i think like kefla fits the mold if there's a dark horse contender of like People just don't even know how good this guy is. And he has, like, based on his education level, he's decently smart. He's fit. I don't think he's I don't think he's a threat to win the final, but I think he go I think he go kind of far in this game. I could also see him being the first boot. I don't think he's gonna be the first boot. 
I, I, there's just, I, maybe that's just me being optimistic because, like, I want to see him toss someone around in a pole wrestle because, like, I need to see him run for five minutes. That's the only thing is I don't know how, because, like, he is a mammoth of a man. I don't know how his knees are these days. I just got to see him run for five minutes and then, like, that'll be, like, the verdict. Big Easy was on the first season of All Stars. He can outrun Big Easy. Anissa. I'm gonna say. You wanna keep naming keep naming people that 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 could be a fun thing, people who can't run. No. I could, but I'm not going to. <laughs> well, uh, well, first off, nobody here, nobody on the show can run like you, Luke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh Kefla, we're excited though. I'm not. Uh, as you, I will say, with Z- I, mean, I, don't, I don't care at all. Like this could have gone to somebody else, and I'd be much happier. But I do think it's cool that we know nothing about him. Like certainly, I could go back and look. I'm not going to. But like, it is just this random person who is so ingrained in the show's history that it, it's cool. It's very cool. Am I excited? God no. But I don't it's know why happen. I'm excited. Honestly, I had no reason to be excited. But like. I could just see people being intimidated by him. And so I just, I'm curious to see how, how it works out. Like I, he just, if I'm looking at uh, like a roster sheet and like he's on there, I'm like, I might want that guy on my team. Yeah. I certainly don't want him to be on someone else's team and me to have to like pay the consequences of that. So. Okay. Well, like, okay. If this was, if like, if you were, if you're reading a challenge, partner and it was like tinder and zoe got jay's face swipe left if she got ryan's face swipe left if she got tyree's face swipe left kefla immediately swipe right after you see those three faces like it's like not even a question yeah and maybe again i'll have my mind changed and i'll be like whatever that was just like weird like i'm just i'm operating on full vibes right now like that is it <laughs> there are no vibes for me to operate on <laughs> but I, I hope he's cool i hope he's fun I hope he hooks up with Kara. I don't know. <laughs> it would never know. Okay, let's we gotta move on before we They're invitation on. only. Okay. Our last guy. Adam Larson. Uh a true throwback competitor. Uh, originally a road rulers the last time i think we saw him on a reality show was road rules viewers revenge when abram and like attacked him uh and before that we saw him on the gauntlet two where he got eliminated first by Derek. but adam is a former challenge champion he was a pretty solid competitor back in his day and based on this trailer i, I think adam looks like he's in good shape and he's like really wants to compete um, I- I'm excited to see Adam Larson. He's a he's a true throwback name. I again, I don't have strong opinions, but knowing what we know based on post show interactions, uh, I think he's he's obviously not going to come in and sit in the corner. And like, kudos to him for finding arguably the hottest girl in the cast, who is much younger than him, and locking that down because. He's got good taste. I'll give him that. He does. He follows me on Twitter. And <laughs> Ooh. and he likes all my pro Ashley tweets. And I saw him too at Challenge Mania. And I mentioned that. And he acted like he didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm like, this is your Twitter, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know about Ashley. And I'm like, that's not true. He's liked a lot of the Ashley tweets. Maybe he's been told not to. Don't know. But he's got good taste. That's such an interesting piece of information. Now I'm a little more skeptical of him that he couldn't own it. I'll tell you the rest of that conversation later. I think it was <laughs> fair that he said that. I think it was fair. So Okay, fine. I just don't want to say it on a recording. <laughs> Adam is a challenge champion before coming into this show. He's a champion for now dating Avery. Um, but I, again, from this trailer, he looks to be like in really good shape. He seems to be moving really well. And against a cast like this who doesn't have a lot of experience, I think he's going to, like, I think really thrive because he was on the show back when you did, like, 10 to 20 daily challenges if you went through the whole season. So he's 
seen more dailies than a lot of these other people have. How many champs do we have on this cast? Let's see. Um, Cara, Laurel, Rachel, Veronica, uh, Janelle, Brad. Uh, technically Kefla and Adam. So we have eight champions. So one third of the cast. Jay Gotti. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're talking finalists. We, we got like 14 or 15 finalists, which I think is pretty solid. All right. All right. That's All how right. I feel. Yeah. Like, yeah. I felt so energized by the women's side and the male side. I'm like yawning and falling asleep. Uh, but I we will be surprised. Missed me at the end, but yeah, I yeah. was definitely was a downward slope for a while. There. <laughs> often eliminated first, often eliminated first. One of the worst players to ever play the game. Uh, no, but we will be surprised. And that's what's nice about All Stars is bro, it's not recurring people who we just know their stick. Like there's going to be somebody who we just talked about in a way that was not excitable, who's going to excite us in the weeks to come. And we're going to be like, holy crap, we never expected this. And that's, this is a really cool platform for that, the show, because they're not who they were at 21. And that's. Yeah. Cool. It, it's really cool yeah. for these people to get to show a side of themselves so many years down the road. And even if it's just getting like a little bit of personality redemption to be like, yeah, hey, guess what? People are a lot different at 40 than they are at 20. Mm -hmm. there's just always stuff that shocks me that comes out of these all-star seasons like you had that first challenge on all-stars one where he sell it killed it you had uh tech just being an absolute joy of a human being for two seasons you mean you had i mean yes coming in and just absolutely dominating that final i mean there's there's just casey cooper pulling off a blind side casey cooper of all people pulling off a political blind side and like had a shot to make a final if she didn't turn out she was pregnant melinda like, I, I know that Zoe used to not like Melinda. Sorry for exposing that. But, like, but she really, like, changed you. Like, you really, after that season, were like, I really like her. And this is a cool season to, like, change my ideas on her. Well, and I don't think I ever had strong opinions on Melinda. But I found, I discovered I was blocked, okay? And I must have said something at one point. Uh, in time. But I don't remember what it could have been. <laughs> but I just think that's cool. Like, she proved herself in ways that, you know, I never thought she could have. I even think of John A, like her, the trajectory of John yeah. A is insane, like beautiful. Like her life is totally different now because she decided to come back and like put her life back out on the line. It just is like cool. If people remember only one thing from the All-Stars franchise, I hope it's John A. Because if anyone deserved a like sweet bow tied on their challenge journey after what they were put through on the show, it's John A. But yeah, I'm so excited to see who surprises us this season. Because like you guys said, it's always someone. It's always something. Mm -hmm. God, I'm so, I'm just, I get so happy whenever I think about John A. Literally, from where she was, back on the show, two championships, should be three, to being the number one pick on that World Championship show, getting to be on the, on the challenge uh, USA as like one of the three MTV women. Like, man, the come up has been big. And this is exactly why she deserves the vote because she's not even on this cast. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, we yeah. just were smiling. She's, but no, yeah. yeah. But someone is going to take the crown this season. Someone is going to surprise us. And also, we get to see a lot of our favorite competitors just back on the show again. And that's awesome. That's a great feeling. Yeah, I'm so excited. Like, when you talk about, if I were to like rank women, I think. <laughs> In terms of my own personal favorites, uh, Laurel, Rachel, and Cam would all be in my top ten. And then if we're talking about like like best competitors, Car is in there too, and Veronica's in there too. I mean, a lot of people are not going to like that, but it's true. You can't argue with three wins. I don't care. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, I just think that this this season, again, going back to that trailer, there is just so much potential for fireworks here. If we're talking about like the challenge female Mount Rushmore, Kara, Veronica, Laurel, it's only missing Coral or, or or Evelyn, depending on who you have. Like, 
it, those are the only names missing, which if you have three of the four, that's insane. If Coral ever makes it onto an all-star season, I will die. That is my all-time favorite, hands down. No one comes close. She is, like, one of the greatest reality TV person- personalities of all time. So, I think I've been saying this for a few seasons, but pay that woman her money, please. That's well, if we ever get an All-Stars 5, but yeah. Yeah, we we almost didn't get four, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this podcast took 15 months to come out, we get for a reason. Uh, well, everyone... We're excited to podcast All Stars 4 all throughout the season with you guys. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get us. See professionals on Twitter. Season debuts April 10th. Sure does. We're going to be locked in. We got, we're going to have a great season on our hands.